Hi, I'm Dr. Jason Rosenfeld. I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Medicine at the JOR and Teresa Lozano Long School of Medicine at UT Health San Antonio. I'm also the assistant director for global health education at the Center for Medical Humanities and Ethics. And my colleagues and I are here today to tell you a little bit more about community health clubs. But first, I'd like to let Janie and Esmeralda tell you a little bit about themselves. Hi, my name is Janie Escareño. I am an academic coordinator with UT Health San Antonio and a community health instructor with the Rio Grande Valley Area Health Education Center. And now I leave this to Esmeralda. Good afternoon, my name is Esmeralda Ibarra and I am a community health worker here in the South Texas. I'm uh, a volunteer with the AHEC Lower Rio Grande Valley here and I coordinated the community health clubs for four years. I'm excited to share a little bit more details about the community health club model. Janie Esmeralda and I have been working to adapt and implement community health clubs in South Texas since 2017, but this model of community-based health promotion was first started in Africa in 1995. This is a participatory education model that brings community members together principally in Africa and rural communities, but since uh, formation, the model has been used to address health issues um, and facilitate behavioral changes across communities in high density urban settlements across Africa, Asia, Latin America, and most recently in Texas. And the whole idea behind the model is to bring communities together to not just learn new information, but to bring out knowledge that exists from within the community itself. Every community knows something. People have lived experiences. And our job as health educators and public health professionals is to bring new knowledge where necessary, but to bring out the existing knowledge and help communities identify common practices that are both uh, promoting well-being, but also potentially affecting health in a negative way so that they can build consensus around solutions that they themselves identify um, and then support each other as they implement changes within their own houses and within their own communities. So at the end of the day, a community health club is a voluntary group of in anywhere between 15 to 100 people in Africa that come together every week to learn together, to create a social identity together, and to support each other as they make those changes in their households and in their communities. We're excited that in the last couple of years that we brought the first adaptation here to Texas to see if you can actually create peer groups uh, to learn and to make social change, and the truth is the answer is yes that humans around the world all like the same thing, which is being together, learning together, and trying to make improvements in their lives together. And when we are offered an opportunity to adapt this model to fit the Rural Telementary and Training Center's goal of training rural healthcare providers and creating opportunities for mentorship, we immediately jumped at the chance. Because really, the idea of mentorship and learning can happen anywhere. And really, at the heart of what a club does is creating an opportunity for people to help each other, to mentor each other as they're making changes and to learn together. And so the idea for adapting the club to a peer mentorship training model for community health workers working in rural settings made all the sense in the world. And so really what we've been doing over the last couple of months is finding the ways to adapt our existing curriculum for training community health workers and natural leaders who have been implementing community health clubs around the world for the past 20 years to adapt it into a virtual environment environment and to equip our community health workers across South Texas with this knowledge and the skills to be able to form their own community health clubs. Janie, I'd like to pass it over to you to talk a little bit more about how we've adapted this model. Dr. Rosenfeld was developed to, to create a, a virtual safe place where groups of CHWs, promotoras, can participate in a peer-to-peer -peer, uh, mentoring, training, and social support that addresses and adapts to group identified need. Our pilot was also CHW centered and would be best used in the respective uh, communities, tailored to the CHC model to the uh, CHWs or the community health workers following the same concept as when uh, we organize a community health club with members of the community. But our the pilot was 
like mentioned, like I mentioned, it was a community health worker centered. We basically our our sessions were delivered to CHWs, where it was delivered by weekly sessions, something that they they um, agreed upon. Um, it was designed to cover specific topics of the CHW models. The pilot was in nine sessions, which was delivered and developed to for them to be able to create their own community health clubs in their designated region and develop more knowledge on what a community health club model is versus a meeting and how to deliver education in a manner of facilitating the community health club sessions to their community members. And in another hand, I can uh, say uh, that this was uh, just a pilot program with uh, we which uh, we're very proud as we are able to introduce uh, this new concept of work such as community health workers uh, to our fellowships community health workers from different areas in South Texas. So a club offers community health workers a different training approach. Science, we have contact with the community every week. We can create strong relationship of trust between the community and us, the community workers. And to the team that we work constantly is um, a medical student and another doctor who, who support this program. This is uh, what has kept all programs strong for four years in the south of Texas area because we have a, a big group of people working together. So not only the community health workers, we go out and, and deliver some curriculum. No, we have a, a big group of people working behind us every day and support the job we do in the, in the communities. But the concept of facilitation instead of teaching and learning together from the wisdom that the, each of the community health workers has is an innovative and motivated concept to go outside and share and learn with our communities because we do the same with our communities. We go out and, and we implement with our communities this kind of learn different. So this way of learning is very important. We empower them to have the confidence in themselves in their knowledge. Because when we do that one with our community, we can start seeing the growing, the community is growing and be better person from them and for their families and for their community. We create leaders outside in the community. Jason? Yeah, and if I can add just one piece to this, you know, the value of the community health club model as originally designed is longitudinal learning so that instead of today, we learn one topic with a group of 15 people led by a trained health worker or facilitator, as we sometimes call them. And then the next time that facilitator or health worker comes to a community, they bring a new topic and now there's a new group of people that may or may not have heard the same lessons or the content from the prior session. There's no continuity in the learning and that creates challenges for knowledge bases within our community, but also for achieving behavioral changes. And so the same argument can be put forward when training networks of community health workers across rural areas is that oftentimes community health workers may be trained in a cohort where they learn a, a, a bit of content at one time, but then they get put into another cohort to learn another set of content that may not be related to the prior one. There's no opportunity for people to build relationships with each other, to build the trust and the respect for each other, to be able to have challenging conversations, and then to be able to help each other and know the nuances of the challenges they face specifically in their communities. And this is the idea of the club model is that it allows for that trust to build those relationships to be created so that individuals in this case community health workers have the opportunity and can feel themselves the chance to help each other to learn from each other to share their own experiences and to build knowledge upon knowledge really important piece of this if i may add something yeah, as it was mentioned by both, both uh, Dr. Risenfield and uh, Esmeralda, as I mentioned also that the CHW was, uh, CHC pilot was sent, uh, was uh, CHW center or promotora center. And uh, something that was very powerful in presenting this pilot to our CHWs was the fact that we recognized how important the community health club was, the model itself. The example that we gave was a necklace or a circle. And we were all 
in the circle, we emphasize the importance of how we are all equal within the, in the, within the circle. And it, it basically gave, gave the message that everyone is a part of this community health club. Uh, we're not in front or behind or above anyone. We are equally uh, members of the club. As a CHW, we are the facilitators. We're helping our members convey their message, open the discussion, and be able to contribute to the learning process. And that's why the CHC club is, is a very special model for CHWs that they will eventually implement in their own region in, in, within their own community. Esmeralda, could I ask you to just briefly touch upon the importance of community health workers? Yeah, the community health workers are very important in our community science. We are the ones who have direct contact uh, with, with them and understand their cultures, the beliefs and the needs of the community. So community health workers work really hard to bring uh, to our community the resources they need has has well has education or physical health and well-being like a mental health COVID-19 vaccination and many more uh, things that community need to know this is time of the pandemic community health workers become the to the frontline workers because many of our community call us heroes and this is very important science we could help them with their needs such as food resources, mental health resources, sources to, to get uh, medical attention or resources to pay their e utilities or their rent. So which uh, so is much uh, misinformation and change during this time of pandemic. The community turned to the people in they trust and found reliable information and resources. But the most important comment I found in the community, we are no alone. We count on you and the community health clubs. And that is very important because the community don't feel alone. They, they know they come with us. They know that we be there for them. And, and every time they, the community needs all us, like a community health workers, we work in the front line every, every day. We work with them. We be there for them. And if we don't have the resources or we don't have the information, we reach our, our colleagues and found the information that we need. And we reach our group that people is working behind us and ask about the information that, that we need to deliver to our community. community. So I think this is very important um, The community can say about the community health clubs. They don't feel alone through, through this pandemic time. So we feel very proud about the work we do all together from our communities. Yeah, yeah. Towards, towards that. the importance of community health workers, um, as mentioned by Esmeralda, community health uh, workers are highly effective individuals that build strong social solidarity within their community. They provide support, a, a, a strong support system and informal counseling that is also available to our community. And also very uh, interesting is that uh, we all have a collective interest in behavior change, either personal or within our community. And so as the community health clubs are developing themselves, then you create this friendly relationship with your members, not just a, a, a relationship of friendship, but also collaboration, solidarity between colleagues. In other words, in the, with as what we call compañerismo, and in the case of community health clubs, club members. So it is uh, a, a very important social co coexistence that plays within the role of all of us in the community health clubs, because we are all interested and invested in making behavior change or health changes that are positive, not only personally, but within families and also within the communities and connecting with, with one another and others, like Ms. Esmeralda mentioned, resources, connecting to those important resources that are needed at the time of that individual's needs. So it's so important, the role of the CHW and having this pilot to be delivered to South Texas community health workers is so important because even within the, the, the distance we are networking already. We are already connecting. And that's the basis of what a CHC is. That's the model, connecting each, each little pebble. And that's how I see our 
um, South Texas Community Health Workers or the Lions, how we named them, you know, connecting that necklace, that chain, or however you want to symbolize it, but we're connecting one with another because we're connected with resources. We're connected with knowledge. We're connected by that comparendismo or convivencia, however we want to, you know, uh, call it, but we united or coming together for a, a purpose. And the purpose is for our well-being. And that's such a great, great summary there, Janie and Esmeralda. I appreciate your saying that. And, and so what, what's beautiful about this opportunity to adapt the community health club model for the rural te- tra- telementoring and training center is just imagine these dense networks of community health workers connecting to each other through community health clubs as a training and mentorship site, sharing resources, sharing knowledge, sharing experiences, but then also these networks of community health workers implementing community health clubs in the communities that they serve, creating these dense social networks of supportive information sharing, supportive resource sharing, and social support to improve health and well-being across our country. And that's ultimately the vision that I think all of us share is well-connected, socially connected, socially supported communities and community health workers around our country. And with that, I would like to thank you for listening to us today, and we look forward to talking to you when we get a moment to do. 